rescue three, taking a ride to Delta. Okay, with my rugby career going well, um, I knew that I was in the right path, but I also knew that I still needed uh, to have a job. I needed to look after my family and for myself as well. So after finishing my diploma in sport management that I did at uh, DUT, um, I then re I remember I was a fitness instructor at Virgin Active, but then I realized that it, it's, it's not enough for the family, it's not enough for myself because I couldn't find a, a job from, from sports departments and stuff. So there was this firefighter post that came up. Um, it was being a firefighter was never, never thought I, I, I would be or had a vision of or even liked, you know. So I applied for this post at uh, King Shaga International Airport. And we got there, we did the 2.4, we did the push-up, the, the, the sit-ups, and oh boy, the way I was killing those things. I was, my mind was just ready. I knew that I had to, I had to get this job. Didn't matter what it take, if I had to die at that particular moment, it's fine, but I, I need this job. So that's how I got to being a firefighter at, at King Shaga International Airport. And being there and understanding that firefighting is not just about fighting fire, it's about you going to the building when everyone is coming out. It's about you coming into an, an MVA, which is a, a, a motor vehicle accident, and someone sees you and they feel that, oh, a firefighter is here, already they feel safe, they feel comfortable. To be a firefighter, you, you have to love it. You, can, you cannot just be a firefighter because you're just doing it because you want to get money. Because when you get into a situation when the building is, is burning and you have to go through it. If you don't love that job, you are also going to panic, you know. So you can't have people that are panicking that you have to save and you panicking as well. But I've just grown to love it. I've, I've, I've grown to understand how my rugby and firefighting as well complement each other. You know, um, it's a team sport, rugby. Firefighting is a, team, is, a, is a teamwork. Whenever you go somewhere, you have to be in partners with these two um, love lives of my story, rugby and firefighting, I would say they chose me, I didn't chose it. And when I got into them, I felt that this is who I am. So at this stage, I, I realized that being a firefighter wasn't something that was going to be easy because it's a full-time job. You need to be at your best. You need to be fit. You need to be mentally prepared. And obviously with rugby, I, I, I could have just let go of it, you know, because it's not providing me with, with for example, cash, which I need for my family. I'm not getting paid for what I do, even though whatever I'm doing is something I love, but I'm not getting paid for it. So I would have literally just, you know, dropped rugby and focused on my on my job because as much as I didn't love it at first, I fell in love with it. And plus, it's actually, it's, it's also providing for me and the family. But then because I had a dream, I had a vision, I had a goal that I needed to set. Um, it wasn't easy to let go of rugby because I knew I still had to fulfill my dream. I still had to not only make myself proud, but I also needed to make sure that those girls that are there at Inanda see me somewhere someday and obviously have hope as well to be um, like the person that I am. So that's when I realized that I can tackle both, you know. Um, how I would manage at that time, I didn't really think how it's going to be or have an idea where it's going to be tough and, 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 and how am I going to manage, you know. But I went on with it and I realized that it is doable, even though at times the, there were times where we fly on Friday, on Saturday we're coming back at noon and I still have to go to work on, on, on Saturday just after from the aircraft 
just land and go back to work you know remember i'm still tired i haven't recovered i still need to be up the whole night to actually work um and then the next morning i have to get to work too as well you know monday i have to go to training you know so it's it, it's it's something that's dual but it, it really does take a lot of you so it's about managing how you manage yourself how you plan you know i know for example when i'm at work i have a program that i need to do from training if for 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 a particular reason i can't make training before i'm at work then i do the program so this is our gym as you can see i'm not sure about these weights you've got big boys that use these weights but it's quite helpful for me especially if i'm not at at, at home where i can use other gyms at golden gym so this place helps me a lot to actually do whatever programs that I need to do and also just, you know, get my muscle fed. So I like this place. I love it so much. I enjoy doing bench press. I'm not a fan of legs, but yeah, bench press, give me something with upper body, back and everything. I'll kill it for you. <laughs> and boom surprise of my life um i didn't make the final squad that was going to new zealand for the world cup that was quite um a heartbreaker for me because from a very very young age yes i've been to the sevens world cup but one thing i told myself is that definitely be i definitely want to be part of the 15th world cup that would mean so much for me and the young girls that are looking up after me and for my country as well. Um, I won't lie, it broke my heart. I literally, I used to cry and ask myself whether I'm good enough, whether, what is it that I didn't do right? Um, did I not work hard enough prior to that? But then I sat down as well and realized that it's not use crying about it. Yes, I didn't make the team, but it's, it's my team. It's still my team. Whatever the decision that the coaches have made, it's for the benefits of the team. You know, um, as much as I'm not going, but my team is going. So they're going to be representing me. They're going to be representing um, the, the whole country. They're going to be representing their family and they're representing me as well. You know, as much as it, is, is, it was hard to swallow, but I knew deep down inside that I was ready. I knew that I deserved the chance. I knew that I, I was meant to be there. But then God said, no, you don't need to be there. There's something better, there's better things that I have for you. The story that I'm teaching you now is to go to the kids because there's young girls that are coming up. They're gonna first, they're gonna face the same situation in even lower levels, we under 16s, the clubs, and imagine what can happen to them when you face this, this situation at the highest level where you could have just, you know, said, I, I'm just leaving everything. I don't want anything to do with rugby, but I'm still here. I, I, I love rugby. I'm going to play it until my leg falls, you know. So looking back at my life and, and everything that has happened uh, with the setbacks with rugby, with the situation that I was facing when growing up, I, as a person, as a young girl, could have given up very easily, you know, and said, ah, let me just quit, you know, and just be like any other normal girl that is living, you know, and getting pregnant, abusing drugs and stuff, you know. But one thing that I never, I made sure that I don't allow that gets to me was quitting, you know. Um, working hard was, was my strength and quitting was never on my ideal list. So I, I had to make sure that I, I live up to those things for my story to be told and for the young girls to, to be able to be inspired by the story that I have and also, and also be able to live through, you know, and also understand that you can be in that similar situation but also make a better life out of yourself.